Yo guys, what's going on at Psycho Sibs Gaming, and we finally have the official patch notes for this big July update. I've got it currently downloading on my Xbox. It's around 3.7 gigabytes, so it is definitely a big one. Today we're just going to read through the patch notes, talk about it a little bit, get my first take. This is my very first read through of this, so we'll all be going through it together. All right, starting off with the big features. New features, added station markers within Giddy Park to improve navigation to points of interest. I didn't think Giddy Park was too hard to navigate, but that's kind of cool. Next, new weekly events featuring playable Horde characters. This is definitely something we're going to have to check out. When I think Horde characters, I think TV Head and Wildflower. So are they actually going to be able to be playable right now? We'll have to go check that out. Next up, we've got adding private play, available through multiplayer terminal. I did I did take a look at this. Um, this is only up to three friends with you, so unfortunately we cannot have full subscriber lobbies. But, oh well, I'm sure we can figure out some cool things to do with that. Next up, we have some balance tuning. First off, common, so for reviving, let's see, reviving no longer ends pea souped. That's pretty cool, no longer ends healing. All right. Keep going down. I'm not going to go over some of the upgrades necessarily. There's a lot of content here. We're going to try to get through it quickly as possible. Chomper. Spike weed. Increased rate of damage. So it's easier to tell if a victim is ensnared. That's pretty cool. Decrease arming delay. Oh, that's really good too. So that'll set up faster. I always thought the spike weed was a little too weak. People didn't really use it that often. A grotty goop. Finally, we get a Nerf to Grotty Goop. Decrease initial damage when acquiring Toxic from 45 to 40. Decrease duration of Toxic from 15 to 13 seconds. And the Toxic element is removed on Victim Vanquish. Very, very interesting. Okay, so less damage, less duration. The Toxic element is, re is just gone. So once the person's vanquished, the Toxic element disappears. Moving on to Colonel Korn, Shogun Guard. Thank you, we needed some buffs to Shogun Guard. Nobody was using this legendary upgrade. Although it was their first one, so you gotta give them some leniency with that. So the shield will rate will regen faster. The projectile fires faster. The, re let's see, decrease delays when the shield is lowered. When the shield is destroyed. Oh, now the shield can regen in one second instead of five seconds after it's destroyed. Nice. Although you do need to have higher health in order to regenerate it. I thought I I read something too um in the in the patch that the shield actually got a higher health. So I don't see that here, but the shield does have higher health now. I'm fairly certain. Let's see. Shuck shot movement speed while firing is back to normal at one. Husk hop some camera restriction were removed so you should be able to aim it better that's interesting all right nightcap spore strike the accuracy got increased from 3.2 to 2.8 okay so increased accuracy increased air accuracy okay fix the issue with the ai being able to use abilities while in shadow sneak thank you we talked about that in one of our previous videos Onto Cactus, that's an upgrade change. Snapdragon, Blue Blazes. Let's see, adjusted projectile spawn location. Okay, so it was kind of a little wonky. Decreased time until homing starts. This is pretty decent. So now it should lock on a lot quicker. Let's see, Acorn Oak, Acorn Dash. Acorn Dash now gains two charges. Awesome, so this should be more like the scientist's teleport, I believe. Treetop turret, damage has been increased. I rarely see acorns on top of oaks that often. Decreased overheat. Lumber support, can now, oh, it can now grant over health. That's interesting. Imp, here we go. The Imp Blaster is the fire rate has been increased from 700 to 725. Increased accuracy in the air. Okay, so we're going to get a lot of jumpy imps now. Decreased accuracy when aiming. I thought they increased accuracy. That's odd. 
Decrease recoil when aiming. That's the big one. That's the big one. So you shouldn't get as much recoil with the weapon now. Perfect. Fixed an aim bug that was increasing rate of fire. I just released a video on that, and then apparently they patched it out in one day. Good job. Props to PopCap. Fixed issue with Imp not taking damage while calling in mech. Are you kidding? Oh my goodness, this is huge. This is huge. I thought that was just a part of the game. I didn't know that that was a bug. Awesome. So now when the imp is calling in the mech, you could, you'll be able to shoot it, which is huge because a lot of imps just use that as like a last resort plan. When you're killing them, they're on low health. They can just call in their mech and survive. That's big. Brandy and Basher, charge doesn't attack if it's caught in spike weed. Interesting. I didn't know that was a problem. Can activate sprint while shield is up. Text updates. All right, A's action hero. Camera recoil. Interesting. Electric slide. Funky bouncer restricts victims from using sprint. It's kind of a weird one. Space station, not a whole lot. All star, not a whole lot. Scientist steam blaster decreased overall damage per blast from 71 to 60. Shifts damage from the initial blast to la latter parts of blast and decrease the ammo from 5 to 4. This is a huge difference. So now, you really, when you're using the Steam Blaster, the person has got to be stationary almost in order to do max damage. So now when you shoot them, you're not going to get that initial big burst to like 20 plus damage, I think, that it hits for. The damage is shifted to the end. So now you really have to just use it as more of a control device to keep people from walking into it, which I think is what it's designed for, is to maybe more control players. Wizard, co-star. There's an issue with Godify. Upgrade two, uh, two head dragons back. They fixed that issue with him becoming invincible in two head dragon. Major bugs fixed. Okay, so two head dragon fixed. The turf takeover water is back because that was apparently disappearing. Um, and improvements to that map. So now it's back in the rotation because there were a lot of issues with it. I know there's a lot of lag problems. The Mount Steep gnome button is fixed. I know there was a problem with the gnome button. Keeping people from 100% in Mount Steep. Wizard invincibility fix. Wizard default gestures second fix attempt. So now I guess the wizard didn't have default gestures and they weren't working properly. Detailed challenge tuning. Okay, so these are just all interesting. So detailed challenge. Land hits with the bow bastard completion. Interesting. So these must be for the weekly challenges. I like how they just say pirate instead of dead beard. So we have a lot, a lot of balance changes for the weekly challenges. This means that when the weekly challenges drop, which I'm assuming... Well, I guess I don't know which ones it'll be. But I guess when the weekly challenges drop, um, we'll have to see how different they are and whether that affects our challenge guide. So anyways, guys, that's it. That's the full the full patch notes. I will put a link to this in the description if you want to just have it for yourself to go through and look. But this has been my usual first reaction to the patch notes. I can't wait to hop in and check out this new weekly event and to take a look at private play. I'll see what that all entails. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If there's something you want me to test out, if you want me to test out the Steam Blaster or test out, I don't know, Grotty Goop, something like that, uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I can always test some of these values uh, to let you know how they work in-game for real. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Game on, gamers.